Welcome to another experience with Methodist Voices in Word and Song Television Ministry. We are so happy you could join us. Today is the sixth Lord's Day after Pentecost. It reminds us of the outpouring on God's people, signaling the start of the church. Please have your hymn books and Bibles ready as we celebrate in word and sacrament. Let us share in the worship. The introit for today is Gather Christians, let's now celebrate, and it's VIP 375. Our call to worship. We gather this day from a week filled with needs and demands. We come to find rest and renewal of our spirits. Open your hearts in love to hear the voice of God. We want to quietly rest in God's presence, free from the clamor of the world. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Our opening in, all hail the power of Jesus' name. And it's numbered 40 in the VIP. Before his cross, it's for 
adoration. Almighty God, we lift up our hearts to you in gratitude for your love for us. Take our lives, our work, and our leisure, the ordinary things of life and the special things, the sadness and the joy we know and have known. Accept, we pray, our praise and thanksgiving as we offer a very, our very self to you in worship and adoration. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> our prayer of confession. God, our Father, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with all our heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves, but you have kept faith with us. Have mercy on us. Strip us of all that is unchristian and help us to live up to our calling through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive the assurance of pardon. To all who confess their sins, and resolve to lead a new life, he says, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. Our prayer of thanksgiving. Gracious God, thank you for your love, grace, peace, and joy with which you have showered on us. You have given us all you know we need and answered our requests. We thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. Amen. Amen. Our next hymn, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, number 173 in the VIP. Oh, 
we come to a very excited area of our worship. But children, the children and youth focus. My young friends, it is so good to have you here today. I would like you to reflect on the hymn chosen for you today. Jesus wants me for a sunbeam. A sunbeam is a little light coming through a small space. At this time when so many unpleasant things are happening among children and young people, Jesus wants you to be a sunbeam for him, to light and to show the way for other young people to follow him. Your hymn, Jesus Wants Me for a Sunbeam, 480A in the VIP. And now we come to the ministry of the word, the collect. Lord, Lord God, God, your, your son, son left the riches of heaven and became poor for our, our sake. When, when we, we prosper, save us from pride. When, when we are needy, save us from despair, that we may trust in you alone, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Old Testament lesson will be read to us by Sister Valerie Hines. The Old Testament is taken from Amos chapter 8, reading from verse 1 to verse 12. This is what the Lord showed me, a basket of summer fruit. He said, Amos, what do you see? And I said, 
a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, the end has come upon my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The songs of the temple shall become wailings in that day, says the Lord God. The dead bodies shall be many, cast out in every place. Be silent. Hear this, you that trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, when will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain? And the Sabbath, so that we may offer wheat for sale. We will make the ephah small and the shekel great and practice deceit with false balances, burying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Shall not the land tremble on this account? and everyone mourn who lives in it, and all of it rise like the Nile and be tossed about and sink again like the Nile of Egypt? On that day, says the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feasts into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. I will bring sackcloth on all loins and baldness on every head. I will make it like the morning for only sun, and the end of it like a bitter day. The time is surely coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread or a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsive reading, Psalm 52, numbered 598 in the VIP. Why do you boast, O mighty one, of mischief done against the godly. All day long, you are plotting destruction. Your tongue is like a sharp razor, you worker of treachery. You love evil more than good and lying more than speaking the truth. You love all words that devour, O oh, deceitful tongue. But God will break you down forever. He will snatch and tear you from your tent. He will uproot you from the land of the living. The righteous will see and fear and will laugh at the evildoer, saying, See the one who would not take refuge in God, but trusted in abundant riches and sought refuge in wealth. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the steadfast love of God forever and ever. I will thank you forever because of what you have done. In the presence of the faithful, I will proclaim your name for it is good. The Gloria. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Amen. The epistle will be read to us by Sister Lucette Cargill. The epistle reading is taken from Colossians chapter 1, and reading verses 15 through 28. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church, he is the beginning, 
the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's affliction for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of his glory and of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our hymn of preparation will be Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, numbered 419 in the VIP.
The gospel will be read to us by the Superintendent Minister of the Watsonville Circuit, the Reverend Stanley Griffin, who will also bring the message for today. The gospel comes to us today from Luke chapter 10, Luke the 10th chapter, reading from verse 38 to 42. Glory to you, O God. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman near Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord. Our text today comes from Luke chapter 10, verse 41 and 42. Luke, the 10th chapter, verses 41 and 42. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be accepted in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. That one thing. In our gospel reading today, we are introduced to the family of Mary and Martha as preparation is made to entertain Jesus and his traveling companions in their home. Mary and Martha began the awesome task of preparing to receive, welcome, and feed Jesus in their home. This preparation is nothing new at all to all of us. We are all familiar with the pressure that places on us in making sure that everything is perfect and in order. We could imagine the look on Martha's face, wanting to make sure that the task was equally shared between Mary and herself. Martha had the courage to speak to Jesus, the special guest, and who was a center of attention. In a very gentle but firm voice, Jesus, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Jesus responded and using the occasion as a teaching opportunity to turn to Martha and also to us today in helping us to take a new look at an old problem. How can we serve God while living in a world like ours? A world that seems to cause us to be so busy in our affairs that we forget what our priorities are. As I look at the narrative, 
There are three Ds that comes to mind. Distraction, devotion, and decision. Friends, what Jesus was saying to Martha as he speaks to us today is that to serve God in a world like ours, we need to deal with the many distractions that, we'll, that we will encounter on a daily basis. Jesus acknowledges the importance of Martha's service in ordinary circumstances. But in these extraordinary times, there are distractions coming to us in a world of hustle and bustle. Mary showed this by choosing the better part. In a narrative world of Luke, Mary and Martha showed that seeking God's kingdom is the first priority above all else, even the common custom of hospitality. But Martha was distracted by her idea of entertaining Jesus. How often have we read these words and felt Martha's resentment? Like her, we are overloaded with schedules, projects, and deadlines. The demands of the family, job, church activities, and communities threaten to overwhelm us, and we cry out for help. But Jesus answers, take us by surprise. Instead of chastising Mary for not helping, he prays her for having chosen what is better. What are we to make of this, my dear friends, when Martha seems so clearly in the right but as I look closely at this story, we see that Jesus isn't rebuking Martha for doing wrong things. After all, she is only trying to make, to take care of the many preparation for their honored guests, making sure that the meat is well seasoned, making sure that the drinks is well flavored, the salad has all the ingredients to make it palatable to her guests. Certainly, this is a worthy cause. But Jesus points out to her that she is worried and upset about many things. She is distracted. And the thing she is distracting from is the best thing, her undivided attention to Jesus. Perhaps what Jesus is saying is that we, to Martha, she need to try and come up that life is not always in the things that confront us. No wonder the old saying says, the good is often the enemy of the best. In other words, there may be many causes clamoring for our time and energy. All of them are worthy and just. But if we become so overwhelmed by them, so distracted that we neglect the one best thing, spending time each day sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to him, spending time set aside for personal devotion, spending time set aside for personal reflection, spending time in sweet communion with Jesus, spending time at his feet. If we become so busy and distracted, then we have allowed these things to become our enemies. The text tells us that Martha opened her home to Jesus. She invited Jesus in, but then she was distracted, not paying attention to Jesus. Oh, how often we have done this same thing, the destruction of our daily lives. It is at this point in the narrative that Jesus turned the conversation from destruction to devotion, the second D in our reflection. Friends, this at times can be very difficult, leaving behind the things that seemed so important to us and finding time in devotion with God. Jesus helped Martha to learn that sitting at Jesus' feet is more important than cleaning the house or cooking the meal and washing the dishes. Martha, Martha, Jesus said, 
I am your guest. I am here. Join Mary and come and sit with me. Lay down your anxious burdens and find the sweet rest I give you. Come and be with me a while while I am with you. Martha, turn off the oven. Martha, turn off the stove. Put the drinks in the fridge. Come and sit a while. Oh, how many times Jesus invites us to come and sit a while, helping us to transit from the daily struggles of life in this 21st century, having so many, so many things to do and so little time to accomplish them. Jesus, as he spoke to Martha, he's speaking to every one of us today in the hearing of my voice. It is time to leave all these things behind. The shopping, the pain of the bills, lock off the cell phone, give, it, give Facebook a chance, a break, and the long list of things goes on and on, but come and sit at my feet. It is devotional time. Friends, let us not take what Martha was doing for granted because her task was very important. Yes, the meals needed to be prepared. Yes, we have to eat to survive, but remember the words of Jesus as recorded in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. He says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Friends, communion with God is of paramount importance. I like what the words of this famous hymn puts it. He says, hear the blessed Savior, call it the oppressed. Oh, he heavy laden, come to me and rest. Come, no longer tarry. I, your Lord, will bear. Bring me every burden. Bring me every care. Come unto me, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Hear me and be blessed. I am meek and lonely. Come and trust my might. Come, my yoke is easy and my burdens light. Friends, we are all made to have communion with God. As we continue to follow the narrative, we see how Jesus moved his horse in conversation from distraction to devotion and finally to invite them in making a decision. The third D in our reflection. Friends, Jesus' response to Martha, Martha's complaint was only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Martha, Martha. We can almost sense the love in Jesus' voice as he said this. Martha did good. She wanted to serve Jesus, but she had not added that one thing that is needed. The Bible gives reference to that one thing. In Psalm 27 and verse 4, it says, One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Luke chapter 18 and verse 22 says, When Jesus heard these things, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Come, follow me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press towards the goal of the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 3 and 13 and 14. It was Spurgeon in one of his commentaries said, and I quote, the one thing needful evidently is that which Mary chose, that good part which should not be taken away from her. Very clearly, this was to sit at Jesus' feet and hear his word, end of quote. Friends, to sit at the feet of Jesus implies readiness to accept and obey what Jesus teaches. To sit at the feet of Jesus implies submission to Jesus. Rebellion is done away with. To sit at Jesus' feet implies faith in who Jesus is. To sit at Jesus' feet implies discipleship. 
to sit at Jesus' feet implies love. If we would be strong to serve in the strength that prevents distraction and unrest, we must know what it is to find time amidst all the duties of life to sit at his feet as disciples. The way to get to spread spiritual holiness that will transform the nation is to begin at the master's feet. You must go there with Mary and afterwards you may work with Martha. Mary had chosen the good part, which will not be taken away from her. Mary's good part was her simple devotion to Jesus, loving him by listening to his word. This was Mary's choice focus. This was her chosen focus. Friends, we all have to make a decision. Leave the things behind, the busy world, the busy schedule of this life and find time to sit at Jesus' feet. Some may feel that sitting at Jesus may not be as important, but there are blessings which we must receive as we make such important decisions. Many benefits are in store for each and every one of us. Benefits such as the peace that Jesus offers to us. For when we sit at Jesus' feet, he offers us his peace. Now one of the hymn writers says, Oh, the peace my Savior gives. Peace I never knew before. And my way has brighter grown since I learned to trust him more. Sitting at Jesus' feet offers to us his strength. Strength to face life's situation. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. And in closing, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus challenges Martha to decide to accept what he was offering to her. My sisters and brothers, in the narrative, in this narrative, Martha wanted to make sure that the house was clean, but now was her chance to learn from Jesus. What are we to learn from these lessons today? We are to learn that we need to seize the opportunity for worship, to leave the distractions of this life for a while. There are many people like Mary, those who know how to serve and also to sit at Jesus' feet. There are people like Martha who diligently and with their best intentions serve God, but without adding that one thing a continued focus on Jesus and its results in great frustration. There are people who don't do either. They are not even in the house with Jesus, for they are too busy with their own pursuit. Friends, Jesus pointed Martha and helped her to see the need to move from, from the distractions of life to take time out to sit at his feet in devotion and finally to make a final decision. What is your response? Martyr, martyr, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank Reverend Griffin for that inspiring message for today. The hymn of response is, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less, number 201A in the VIP. Oh! 
Now we'll have the announcements. We give thanks to all who continue to support this ministry by viewing and participating actively in the television service. We remind you that this worship experience is designed to engage you in active worship on screen. As such, we ask that weekly, as the hymns are announced and the passages are read, you will also use your hymnals and Bibles to stay engaged. Sing, read the scripture, and pray with us as you are prompted on screen, as if you are in physical worship. For your convenience, we share the order of service used each time with all who will receive. If you are not already on our mailing list, please request order from main office at jamaicamethodist.org and you will be added. You may also visit the district website at www.jamaicamethodist.org to download the document. Each Lord's Day at 1.30 p.m. when we gather online, we make the worship experience more meaningful by resisting the urge to engage in other tasks while we worship and where possible, to give full attention to God and to receive the blessings reserved for you and your loved ones. We are grateful to you for your contribution to this ministry and its upkeep on the air. Please make note of contact details on screen to make your financial contribution to that effect. We need your support. Let us now give thanks for what we have received and what we anticipate you will offer for this wonderful work. Let us pray. God who provides, we bless your name for your gifts freely given to us. We are ever mindful that what we possess really belongs to you and that you, we are merely stewards of these tangible gifts in service of others till you return. We thank you for those who continue to share in the work of proclaiming the good news of salvation through television, the internet, and the world wide web by offering their time, their talent, and resources. We ask your blessing on the gifts we have received and those we anticipate. We further ask that you help us all to be faithful and teach us to manage these resources to advance the work of your kingdom. We pray these through Jesus Christ, our resurrected Lord and Savior. Amen. Prayers of intercession. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Father, as we go to our homes and our work this coming week, we ask you to send the Holy Spirit into our lives. Open our ears to hear what you are saying to us in the things that happen to us and in the people we meet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open our eyes to see the needs of the people around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open our hands to do our work well, to help when help is needed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open our lips to tell others the good news of Jesus and bring comfort, happiness, and laughter to other people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open our minds to discover new truths about you and the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open our hearts to love you and our fellow men as you have loved us in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. To him with you, O Father, and the Holy Spirit, one God, all honor and praise, 
shall be given now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name, thy, thy kingdom come. Thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evils. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is at the name of Jesus, numbered 132 in the VIP. Reverend Stanley Griffin will now give the benediction. The blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with us all, both now and forevermore. Amen.